Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today, even, we are going to be talking about something that a lot of you have been asking me about in the comments, in messages, and on the forums. And that's about my new server. Now, it started out being called the WD40 server because it was uh, basically going to be 40 terabytes. But as things do within our uh, projects, it's evolved slightly. And it's now not Z97, it's Z117. It was 40 terabytes, it's now 60 terabytes. But this is pretty much ready to enter active service in a permanent fashion for me now as my home file server, Plex server. Uh, basically, it's like my own version of Dropbox because I use it as a cloud server as well. But I thought it would be a good opportunity for us also to kind of retire, say goodbye, give fair, you know, farewell wishes, gold watch, all that type of thing to the old 2012 server. It has been uh, a very stable and reliable beast. Uh, originally when I built this, I based it around the Gigabyte Z68. Yes, I did say Z68. UD3H and it had an i3-2120 uh, uh, in I do believe. 8 gigabyte, of course, a low profile memory, it's just the white stuff, a uh, Noctua L cooler, which is the face down one, as you can see it in here now. It's Noctua fans throughout as well. It's all housed in a stock Fractal i3, uh, i3 R3. Um, it's got an Adaptec 51245 RAID card, which is 16 port, 4 external, 12 internal. I had, had th that hooked up to uh, six Western Digital Green two terabyte drives in a RAID 6, which ended up giving me a usable amount of data at just over 7.6 terabytes. Power supply that's in it was, and still is, a, uh, it's not super flower, it's silver power, uh, and it was a 460 watt passive unit. Um, and that's pretty much it for this little beast. Like I said, it's been incredibly reliable. It's never, the only time I've ever had any uh, problems with it was when I was using my uh, UPS to shut it down in the evenings and start it back up again. That wasn't a problem with the board, it was actually the raid car was having an absolute fit about it. So I ended up just running it 24 seven continuous. And I would probably say out of the last four years, it's maybe spent uh, two, maybe three weeks in total uh, turned off. And that would have only have been when I was away from home uh, and I knew I wasn't going to be needing to stream stuff from Plex and I just turned it off just to save matters. And I, it, it's honestly been a, an amazingly reliable beast. So it's going to be sad to uh, strip it and see it go. But as things do, you know, we do need to move on. So I'm moving on to the nice new one, which I'm going to go into a lot more depth with you with now. First of all, we should really talk about case mods. This is almost me doing a complete wrap up at the end of the project because there are videos online. There is even a playlist about the how this project has evolved as I've taken it on. But essentially, I was I really liked the original R3. I wasn't too keen on the R4. Made that perfectly clear to Fractal, but the R5 they definitely took a big step forward. Now, what I also saw in the R5 was the fact that I, I could make it suit my server needs very well. I knew I needed more drives this time. Um, and the original one, I think it five, I'm not sure whether it was seven or eight drives in total the standard R5 could use. But through some uh, magic at the start, I ended up getting a non-window case and then they sent me a window case as well, which meant I had two cases. That got uh, my brains, uh, my juices flowing in my brain, and it meant that I had two of the five dry cad caddies. So essentially what happened is this uh, R3, uh, R5, sorry, of mine, is actually a mishmash of two cases in total. Now, when you, uh, you do get it, you get a standard one, which can have two fans at the front, and you can remove that and you can see that uh, you've got the uh, two fans here, but you can also see the base of a third at the top. Now this top section would normally be for your optical drives, uh, but I removed those entirely and I've actually got a, um, a third fan nestled behind there. Now the mounts that are on the other side, which would be handy if I brought you in so you could have a look, 
Now when I did this, I used all uh, fractal parts. So essentially what I did is the mount for the two fans that you would have had here, what I essentially did is took it out of the other case, flipped it round, chopped it down, and now I've got a mount for three 120 millimeter fans in the front. Best thing I can keep uh, saying to you about is I did use original fractal parts because I wanted it to appear like this was the way fractal wanted it uh, to have left the factory. So we've got the two five cages. It's actually bolted in on the standard uh, fractal mount at the top, but then I've uh, bolted the two cages together, bolted them in the front, had to add some new uh, holes to uh, fit the the bolts through, and I've ended up using uh, stainless M3 bolts there. But as I said, it was literally just a way for me to be able to use standard parts and keep it all looking quite stock. Moving on to the floor, it did have a fan mount in the bottom here, and you also had the mount for the standard hard drive cage because it was normally mounted in the bottom and you just had a slider rail at the top. So all I did is I put a uh, simple piece of 0.8 millimeters thick aluminium, which I ordered pre-cut off of eBay, in the bottom. I then skimmed that or filmed that with some white Dynock film. Nice and simple, covers the mounts up, stops uh, any extra dust being able to get in. All really nice and simple, really, really dead easy, really. Another good thing that we can talk about while we're at the bottom is this is a 550 watt Superflower Leadex Platinum power supply that I got from the wonderful people at Overclockers. Um, essentially, when I, I did have the gold white version that I was going to use that was 650 watt, and just as I was about to swap from uh, Z97 to Z170, uh, the magic man Levitt at OC UK turned around to me and said, Tom, this is the power supply you need to have in it. It's got a better rating, it's a slightly lower wattage, it will sit a lot closer to the sweet spot when you're using it, so it should save you time long term. It has actually got a, uh, an auto or a passive uh, button and essentially until it gets really hot the fan doesn't spin and I ha actually haven't the whole time that I've been uh, using it in the, uh, the, the, what do they call it? I think it's the eco mode they call it. Yeah, when it's in the eco mode I actually haven't seen the fan spin at all. But what we can also see while we're down at the bottom is the custom braided cables which uh, James at Pexon did for me, amazing job as well. He turned it all around so fast. And essentially what I wanted the super flower, but they, they're not that, because they're um, platy, pla, plat, patented, that's the word I was looking for, um, connectors, they go onto the power supply because they light up white. I had a word with Pexon, he custom braided them for me. And as you can see, if we uh, tilt the camera up, they certainly do look the part and the rest of the rig as well. Now I know a lot of people are already shouting at the screen because it's not your average server and it looks pretty, but it's because it was my one and I wanted to put my personal twist on something and I didn't just want, you know, simple off the shelf parts uh, and it be all kind of just generic. And that then also leads us on to something else which is uh, very different, very, very different. So I have an Adaptec. 81605ZQ. Now this baby is a 16 port all internal ray card. It's their latest 8th generation or 8000 series ray card. It's 12 gigabits uh, per second per port. So it's basically um, a 6 gigabit SAS RAID, you know, so it's 12 gigabits a second. I'm not going to try and uh, explain it because I'm even going to confuse myself. Now, the, uh, the cables, yes, the cables are a bit of a pain in the bum, but they're not the type of thing with the, the, the raid car cables, they're not the type of thing that you can find easily. I looked everywhere to try and find some either simple black ones or all out crazy red ones. Now, where these are the new connectors, uh, the, the ones that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that Adaptec sent with the silver cables were as good as I could find that I was going to get. Some of the other ones you could find were blue, but it just wouldn't have um, matched with this rig at all. So now, little diddy raid card, you can see there's only a small PCB on it, but you've got this enormous cooler and it's actually uh, an Arctic Accelero and I'm read off the side, it's the S1 Plus. Now that is a passive graphics card cooler. What I ended up doing was having a plate made uh, to mimic the original heatsink, it's made out of three millimeter copper. Nate at uh, E22 had this, uh, well, he actually, I sent him my heatsink and he sent me back two of these copper plates. 
Then what I did is I used thermal epoxy to bond the uh, accelero cooler to my three millimeter plate. Now, I was hoping that when we mounted it, I was going to be able to uh, mount it with nuts and bolts and it would all be all nice and fine. But the nuts and bolts, I couldn't get ones that were, uh, basically it just didn't work. So that was my fault. So I ended up having to use the standard clips which put less strain on the PCB. And then this little thing here is actually a, a graphics card support that came with a an old and by old, I, I think it was like two or three generations ago, power color card that I just had in my man drawer. So that now supports the, um, uh, the big heat sink, stops it pulling down too much on my RAID card. And also because there's only actually two uh, pinouts or mounts for the um, RAID card heat sink, it actually keeps it balanced as well. So we come back to the wider outside view and I went with the Noctua L cooler on this as well. Uh, essentially, they do work incredibly well. I don't really get above 40 degree temperatures and I don't generally have my fans spinning very hard at all. I, uh, these are all um, uh, Noctua, I won't say Noctua, but they're Fractal fans and I forget the model number, but they are the Dynamic GP12s and they're 1200 RPM. Now, yes, I did have to look, but I'm not a robot. So they're the GP12s from Fractal. Now I've got uh, two in the front, two in the roof, and one in the back. The one in the back is actually an intake, and I have an extra dust filter on the back, which pulls off just to be able to uh, keep the airflow uh, nice and clean, or as clean as possible. I may in time, because there is uh, some grills at the back of the R5, I may in time make a plastic blank so that uh, any extra air can't get pulled in here. Like I said, the fan in the bottom doesn't really do anything because it hardly ever spins. We've got the uh, uh, face down CPU cooler, which actually helps cool the RAM and uh, the, heats, uh, the heat sinks for the MOSFETs and stuff around the board. The board is a uh, Asus Z170 Deluxe. The CPU that's in it is an i3-6320 running at 3.9 gigahertz. I've got some white Crucial Sport 16 gigabyte um, RAM, which is just hidden just off the side. The only other hard drive I've got in it is a one terabyte uh, Crucial solid state drive. Uh, the Crucial solid state drive is uh, for really fast, you know, quick change access uh, for like file sharing and things like that. It's what I genuinely use for uh, what I would call my like cloud services. Then yes, I do have a big giant bank of hard drives there, which I've covered it there in the custom mount using Fractal parts. But they were, uh, there was 10 4 terabyte reds, uh, but now there's 10 6 terabyte reds. And the two cages actually work out really well because essentially what I've done is I've got two banks of RAID 6. And RAID 6, essentially, what you end up doing, it, it strikes across, but you do lose the equivalent of two drives for parity. So, technically, really simple way of putting it is it, I could have two drives die on one of the arrays, swap them in for blanks, and then the RAID card will pretty much rebuild everything um, because uh, the data is um, uh, basically spread across all of the drives. So if a drive goes down and you replace it with a bank, blank, you, the RAID card will work out the missing data just by the missing ones and zeros. So it's a, it is a complicated way. I know a lot of people keep telling me about using other methods like um, free NAS and ZFS and all that type of stuff. But essentially I've built this for me. I've stuck with what I know. My old server was incredibly reliable and I never had any problems with it. But maybe once I've, this is now going into full service, this is now sorted. Maybe I can look uh, with the old server or maybe build in another basic one. Uh, I can look into those other methods, but I, I, it was too, this is too important for me to have risked doing something entirely new. Um, so really that's about it. Like I said, we've got an Asus Z170 Deluxe uh, hiding at the back. That is a uh, massive overkill, yes. And then the hard drive I've got at the bottom is actually a Plex Tor. And it is an M.2 drive. I can't remember the actual model number. I am looking. Um, but essentially, it's the one that I reviewed a while ago. 
Uh, it was the first M.2 drive that I had reviewed and it came with a PCI Express add-in card as well. It does about 800 mega second read and writes. Actually, no, sorry, it was 800 reads and then about 600 writes. So it's a very quick uh, solid state drive for a server. But again, it was just to keep it very quick and nippy. Uh, and yes, it's overkill, but it's mine. So what would you expect? So thanks for stopping by and sharing my now what we're going to call the WTF or what the bleep server, 60 terabyte server, because it did kind of evolve. This is also the first time that I filmed in uh, 1080p 60 frames per second as well. So I'm actually interested to see your feedback on the uh, video quality. Yes, at the moment it is still a bit echoey, but it will be getting addressed in the not too distant future. I just need to get things settled, start cranking out more videos before I try sticking things on the walls and adding stuff around and about. So a uh, massive thank you to quite a few people for helping me with this one really. Asus obviously, but then we've also got uh, Overclockers, Stephen especially, because he's always a, a little bit of a genius and it, we call him the magic man and he's lovely, but he did help me out with the power supply and it was quite literally, I didn't ask, he asked me, so it was brilliant. Uh, then Nate for making the plate for the uh, Ray card. Uh, and then we have Pexon that did the uh, cables in an unbelievably fast time considering I actually started this uh, PC a year ago and I'm now only just getting to the point that I want to share it with you as it's finished. But then also a massive uh, shout out to Western Digital for the, uh, the WD Reds as well. So I'd love to know what you think. I know a lot of people are asking for uh, like software help but the operating system that I'm running on this, uh, at the moment I'm just running Windows 7 and I went for Windows 7 rather than uh, Server 2012 R2 in the end just because of the simplicity of being able to get uh, antivirus for it. But again, it was just something to trial around with. My data on the RAID is safe, so if I change the operating system it's only really adding the Adaptec Max Cache software um, and a few other bits and bobs onto the actual operating system. So I can swap and change quite easily. Also, the other reason why I was waiting around is I wanted to see if there was going to be a Windows 10 kind of based operating system that may have come out a little bit after. Because um, they can be quite, um, uh, don't really use a lot of resources and that might have been something that I may have ended up having a dual boot play around with. But for the moment, Windows 7 does exactly what I want. And really the only thing that I have running on it software wise is, uh, as I said, like Plex. Uh, and where I use it for storage, I have it set up as a, uh, a network drive on Orca, my main PC. And the only other thing I really use for it is I remote desktop in and they're all incredibly simple things to be able to set up. Uh, and there are so many guides out there, I wouldn't really want to, in m uh, my naivety, try and teach you how to do those. But to set, it, th there are some very good guides out there with setting up access permissions and stuff like that. And I think that's part of the, the lovely learning uh, process when you do get involved with these things. Uh, and I'm not sure I would be the right person to try and take on that. But if you have got any questions, you can go onto the Overclock 3D forums. I'll put the link to the build log and where all the photos are for this underneath. Don't forget that you can follow Tiny Tom Logan on Facebook. That's where all of the pictures for these type of things go up and the reviews and all that type of thing. And also, Tiny Tom Logan is now on Twitter. But to recap, right at the end, if this is the first video of mine that you found uh, and you enjoyed it, yes, I know they're a bit lengthy. That's just my style. It's more of a chit chat between friends uh, rather than uh, me trying to push as much data at you or as much info at you in a short period of time and just ram it down your throat and then send you to an affiliate purchase link. That's not the way I do things. I'm a little bit more relaxed. It's more like chatting with your mate in the pub. But if you did enjoy it, please click the subscribe link and I would love to hear from you in the comments. But for now at least, Tiny Tom Logan with another first 60 frames per second video for you, out.